if you're hearing this, you're lucky. A devastating computer virus has removed most of our wisdom teeth. Cherish this episode while it is yours, and share it as soon as you can with someone you trust. Here's Elaine. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Elaine's Cooking Podcast for the Soul. I'm your host, Elaine Martinez. For anyone who is just now joining us, greetings. And for our returning listeners, welcome back. Congratulations to all on surviving another week and a big thanks to you for devoting a potentially huge fraction of your remaining time on Earth listening to this podcast. This is, of course, a cooking podcast designed for our very brave new world. What a week it has been, folks. Warm here in L.A., yet with lingering dampness we in the desert are not quite used to. I suppose it's the radioactive cloud mass blocking the sun all week that is making it so, uh, unsavory. But listen to me going on about the weather. Allow me to stop myself before I start reading from the Farmer's Almanac, and let's get to the whole reason we're here today cooking up a yummy dish. This week we are working on a very promising recipe. Taking the reins this week is guest and co-host Betty Lou Parker. Elaine, what a pleasure. Now, can I admit something to you? By all means. Weather talk. The worst, right? (laughs) We agree on this. It's a social fallback, a straw of the grasping variety, to be certain. My late husband's even later mother used to call every Sunday, and that is all she would ever talk about. (laughs) Drove me batty, and I vowed I'd never be that old lady babbling about how unseasonably cold it is. (laughs) Lucky she didn't live to see L.A. percolating at a steady 30 degrees in the summertime. (laughs) She would just... Oh, and now I've just started doing it. Stop me now, Elaine. (laughs) Well, we need not linger on the subject when we have a much more enticing one before us. Tell us about the recipe we're working up today, Betty Lou. I call it Betty Lou Sweet Potato Something. Ambiguous. I like it. (laughs) What I'm really offering is a real delicious base recipe that you can eat by itself if you're just, you know, sad and uninspired. Or, with a bunch of random toppings you may or may not have on hand. And it all starts with one very important ingredient. Can you guess? Angostura bitters? I feel like it's always Angostura bitters. It's sweet potatoes. (laughs) That was my second guess. I could have taken this massive can of cut and peeled sweet potatoes as a clue. (laughs) Now, Elaine, uh, I'm looking around this dentist's office of yours... Uh, This is where you practice? It is. Was? Business has not been great. But, yes, I've worked here at L.A. Dental Care since the beginning. I helped pick out the carpet, in fact. Oh, it's, um... Gray! (laughs) Yes, that's what I was going to say. You had a question about our venue? I just assumed we would have an oven or, you know, some cooking utensils. Oh, that reminds me. I fashioned on my own time and dime, and definitely not utilizing the dead hours of my workday or items from the break room's kitchenette, a cooking cart. Oh, my stars! This is just the cutest thing I've seen at the dentist's office since that poster of the cartoon alligator smiling real big with all those teeth. (laughs) A little less cute now, I suppose. What with all the zoo breakouts and unusually aggressive animal behavior. Oh, I know. Did you hear about those murders of crows moving underground? Hear about them, Elaine. (laughs) I live in Burbank, and let me just tell you, People have learned real quick to turn around and run when they see a manhole cover. Those crows have holed up in the sewers and pretty much anywhere else that is completely removed from direct sunlight. Yeah, it makes me want to follow their lead, but, you know, they don't call them murders for nothing, do they? I suppose not. That's science, you know. Natural selection. And I'll tell you another thing. 
I have not seen any flowers fall from the trees since the... Well, I'm just going to say this one weather thing, and then I'll hush, I swear. But at this point, typically, the cottonwoods have shed their fluffs. The jacarandas are dropping their purple flowers. Instead, everything appears to be frozen in place. Maybe it's the fact that there is no wind. Maybe I should catch myself slipping into this fail-safe weather chit-chat and let you tell me what's on this delightful cooking card. Oh, you know, I'd listen to you go on all day. But yes, let's return to the reason we're here. So on the bottom of the cart are all the utensils like whisks and spatulas with a space left over for a large mixing bowl, two plates, and two mugs. It includes a hook to hold the single one-quart pan I possess, and then on top is the hot plate and a very simple toaster oven. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Elaine's cooking podcast where the soul just got pwinged. Or is it pwned? I think that's the right word. I'll ask Sam tomorrow if he shows up. I think we're really ready to get going on my sweet potato something. Hand me that mixing bowl, hon. Here you go. Now, we already know about the 29-ounce can of cut and peel sweet potatoes. These are among the least popular items at the distribution center, and pretty much everyone is looking to trade them. Well, that may change after we finish this delicious recipe. I'll get that open for you while you continue. Okay, so we plop these in this mixing bowl here, and voila! Um... Voila, meaning that's the first step? Yep, it's the first and the last step of this recipe. Oh, um, great. Yum. Let me just get a couple of forks if we're ready to, uh, dig in. I thought you said we'd do the eating part after the break. It is what we normally do, but that was an insanely, I mean, delightfully simple recipe, so we're running a bit ahead of schedule here. Well, we could do the modified version if we have time. I have all the stuff. Came straight from the ration swap. Oh, yes, please, let's do that. Okay, it starts exactly the same as before. With a very large can of cut and peeled sweet potatoes. And after that, anything goes, really. I like to add a lot of brown sugar and then a dash of cinnamon and nutmeg. My mother-in-law hated nutmeg. You've added quite a lot of it here. Oh, well, so I have. In addition to the cinnamon and nutmeg, we're going to mix that up with whatever kind of fruit you can find or bargain for. I scraped up some pineapple tidbits, my favorite. But mandarin oranges are okay, and maraschino cherries are a real classy option. You'll open and fish out about a cup of pineapples, Lane. My pleasure. And then after that, it's just a cup of alternative milk. I never thought I'd live to see the day where I reach for almond milk, but I guess since this country's livestock started producing that battery acid-like milk, I'm actually satisfied enough with this fake milk business. I just use half a cup of this nonsense. And you know, it's the grass that makes it so acidic. All these poor cows are stuck eating whatever the blast didn't wipe out. And you remember photosynthesis? Plants need sunlight. You know, science and all that. Though, I suppose even if we do get sunlight, these temperatures will keep new grass from springing up properly. Okay, that's about a cup of pineapple tidbits, I think. Oh, just in time, Elaine. <laughs> I wasn't sure I was going to resist getting into weather talk this time, but you saved me. That's what I'm here for, Betty Lou. <laughs> so, at this point, we just stir the potato, sugar, spice, fruit, and milk alternative in big old swipes. Personally, I don't mash. I like these big cutlets of sweet potato. Gives the fork something to think about. I must say, that looks and smells pretty promising. We're pretty much ready for the final step of this here bonus recipe. I know it's a little complicated, but I think it's sometimes worth it. Now, you want to crank that toaster oven up to bake, hon? There it goes. It'll just be a moment. That's just fine. While it warms up, I'll just show you the final step. Crust. Oh, my. Crust? Well, crumble may be a better word. 
All that is, rolled oats, pecans, a little extra brown sugar. Now I'm noticing you just have this very shallow tray that came with the toaster oven. Is that our only dish? I guess I should invest in some small ramekins or something, huh? Oh, nonsense, dear. I was just asking to make sure that it's okay for me to go ahead and plop it all down. I'll take full responsibility for the less-than-stellar plating. Well, I sincerely doubt it'll affect the taste of my sweet potato something at all, Elaine. I don't suppose so. Um, should I layer on the crumble before we put it into bake? You're one step ahead of me. You really got a knack for this cooking stuff, Elaine. Oh, thank you for saying so. It's a skill I've been fostering for quite some time. My original plan was to host a public access cooking show that featured dentist-approved recipes. But my path has taken a different course, it seems. I know what you mean. One day you're swinging down a high life at the Blacklight Bowling Alley down in Huntington Beach for your best friend's bachelorette. The next, you're hunkered under the concession stand bargaining your sour punch straws for part of a five-pound bag of nacho cheese. Oh, life is funny sometimes. Well, anywho, would you care to do the honors of starting your toaster oven up? Can do, Betty Lou. And we'll just crank the timer. Wonderful. I think now is a really good time for a break for our sponsor ad. When we return, we will check in on Betty Lou's sweet potato something. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned, or else. This week's episode is brought to you by random shoes found on the side of the road. Ever wonder how one and sometimes two shoes end up on the curb? Ever see a single flip-flop flipping and flopping unaccompanied on the side of the highway? Ever seen a set of nice-looking loafers placed with sinister indifference near, but actually at, the corner of the street? Would you feel better if they were placed at the street corner instead? Why? Did someone take these random shoes found on the side of the road out of the car, rearrange some stuff, and then forget to put them in their car again? Did someone get back at their overdramatic partner by acting overly dramatic and chucking a single sneaker out their front door, effectively demoting it to someone's shoe, to simply another random shoe found on the side of the road? Was someone walking, decided that they could do without the tan lines, and slip off their tennis shoes for the rest of their stroll? Are these shoes seemingly so random and in good enough shape sigils? Are they messages from someone, too? someone? Do they contain mini USBs with full episodes of delicious and available recipes uploaded to them? Big thanks to Random Shoes found on the side of the road. Random Shoes on the side of the road can be found at your local wherever. Random Shoes on the side of the road. How did they get there? We'll never tell. Hello and welcome back to Elaine's Cooking Podcast for the Soul a podcast to keep your post-nuclear dining new and clear from fallout radiation. I'm your host, Elaine Martinez, and this evening we have worked up a delicious dish with our new friend, Miss Betty Lou. Betty Lou, five foot two, eyes of blue. <laughs> if you are just catching up with us, you missed the whole darn thing, but maybe Betty Lou will catch you up. In a flash, this sweet potato something still baking in that toaster oven is made up of a can of cut and peeled sweet potatoes from a can. We mix that up with some brown sugar, cinnamon, and nutmeg, pineapple tidbits, and some almond milk. Then we topped her with a kind of homemade granola mix of raw rolled oats, brown sugar, and pecans. And bango, bango! Oh, look at that. What great timing. Oh, Elaine, I saw you crank that down to make it go off. It's the great secret of all cooking shows. Let's take a peek. Mmm, it smells mm, so... So much better than it looks, right? And I bet it tastes better than either. <laughs> Crunchy-looking oats, gently baked sugar over a bed of delicious sweet potatoes. I'm just going to dive right into the pan itself here. Would you like to grab a fork and join me? Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. What do you think of my sweet potato something, Elaine? It is truly something. 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> what I like best about this recipe is that the margin of air is as wide as the clear blue sky on a brisk autumn morning. Yes, you could sub in dried cherries or walnuts or... Just 40 degrees as the sun peaks over the horizon. But certainly a 68 or by the afternoon. Clouds building slowly throughout the day so that by sunset, the sky is a delicious exposition of color that Michelangelo himself would look at with rapture. Paintbrush falling to his side. Yes, well, I'm... There is a breeze, but only one that brushes the tallest grasses. So gentle, it may well be a grasshopper. Or a thousand grasshoppers flickering throughout the field. The brighter stars have started making an appearance, and the moon is too excited and leans on your shoulder, even as the sun sets. Our moon takes her place like a god ready to answer the prayer of every tiny firefly that blinks out a message of beautiful desperation. A magpie flutters down to pluck one last blackberry from among the thorns and is silent. A perfect day from dawn to dusk. Sweet potato something. Wow. Oh, I was doing the thing again, wasn't I? I just hate it when a conversation becomes so dull the weather is really all folks feel like talking about. I'm sorry, Elaine. Really, it was more of a reverie, a, a monologue. I enjoyed it. Oh, good. Betty Lou, it means so much that you take the time out of your day to help us discover new ways of working with old rations. It was truly my pleasure. It's almost curfew, so I suppose I should skedaddle before the ad ministers make their sweep. True. It's very important that we all make it indoors before 7 p.m. when the state releases the bots. They're relatively harmless, I'm told, the ad ministers. Well, they're nine feet tall, Elaine. Have you interacted with one yet? All they do is come right up to your face and advertise something you haven't heard of in ages. A patient told me that they are just there making facial recognition scans and nothing more. Still, I've also heard rumors that they may collect stragglers. They look fucking terrified. So I'm going to dash. Dear, give me a big hug, okay? Big hug, Betty Lou. Oh, bye, honey. Betty Lou certainly has more to say about the weather than she would like to admit. But what if that simple touchstone conversation sure is hot today... Hope this rain lets up soon. Hope the climate stimulators don't go offline again. What if these are not social fallback topics, but rather simple and underrated ways to relate ourselves to one another and the community at large? Discussing the activities of the atmosphere and its impressions upon our porous skins is like suggesting that though we reside in different bodies, we are truly united on this planet. Just as the warmth of the sun so enthusiastically permeates the ever-thinning membrane of the ozone, so too does a simple word of solidarity permeate our similarly thinning society. I guess the idle ponderings of small talk are a welcome consistency as everything else in this world seems to be undergoing an anxious and relentless change. I suppose I'd rather talk to my neighbors about the weather than not talk to them at all. I don't know if I would have said that before. So here we are at the end of another day. I'm so thankful for you, dear listener, that you were able to join me this week and continue to be thankful for those of you who return the USBs I download every episode onto. Stay tuned for the next drop-off pick-up point. I have a feeling this week's episode will be a shoe in For some nice listening? Does that make sense? Did you listen to the ad? Anyway... This has been Elaine's Cooking Podcast for the Soul. I'm your host, Elaine Martinez, not crying, hugging you. Good night. This episode of Elaine's Cooking for the Soul was written and directed by Allison Slice and produced by Mackenzie Mazell. This show is brought to you by The Period Network. Story by Allison Sliceman. Elaine Martinez was voiced by Rosa Delgado. The part of Betty Lou Parker was played by Jeanette O'Connor, whom you can find on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at SceneWork. That's spelled S-E-E-N-W-O-R-K. 
you can see Jeanette's work in her recurring role on seasons three and four of Baskets on FX, or in Doom Patrol on the DC Universe channel. The Courier Bravely Transporting Elaine's episodes was voiced by Rachel Wong. Logo design by Nikola Tesla. Elaine's Cooking for the Soul now has a Patreon. If you feel like supporting the show with a dollar, five dollars, or even more, go find us over at patreon.com. Patrons get to hear our guest interviews and enjoy other exclusive Elaine's content, and it's just a great way to connect with us and support what we're doing. If you're still alive and listening, that's great news! Please rate, review, subscribe, and share this podcast with your fellow survivors. It's the only way anyone will know we still exist, or at least did exist at some point. You can also follow Elaine on Twitter at Elaine's Cooking or on Instagram at Elaine's Cooking. You can email us at Elaine Martinez DDS at LADentalCare.org. That's E L A I N E S. Well, just rewind 15 seconds if you need to hear that all again. Every recipe we use is achievable with a can do attitude, a stovetop, and approval from the interim government. We'd love to hear your apocalyptic recipe ideas and see your attempts at what we've cooked up this week. Remember, boil your water and never give up. Until next time. Word of mouth is a powerful thing. If you can't pass off this wisdom tooth in person, we ask that you tell a trusted colleague where to find it for themselves. Do not deviate from your regular routines. Keep listening. Keep sharing, keep living, and find us again next week.